The first doorway outside of marriage is in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 13 to 14. This is what the Bible says. It said, The woman which hath an husband that believeth not, if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. Paul was teaching here. He said, if you marry an unbeliever, if the unbeliever doesn't choose to leave you, he said, stay there. He said, your staying can save him. So the first door out of marriage is for a man or a woman who doesn't believe in God or in the scripture. If you find yourself in that kind of marriage, because that person is not bound by scripture or by God, that person can wake up and leave. And the Bible said two can only work together if they be agreed. So what Paul was teaching here is that if the unbeliever that you married, maybe because you were not informed, decides to say he's not doing anymore, he said there's nothing you can do about it. He said on that situation, the person can leave. But he said if he doesn't do that, he said remain in the marriage, your presence will sanctify that person because your presence makes your children holy. So the salvation of that person may just come out of your character and your holy living. And so if an unbeliever is in a marriage with a believer, in that kind of equation, the unbeliever can walk away. He doesn't fear God. He doesn't respect scripture. And in that situation, there's nothing you can do. And so Paul said in that situation, you are not bound. Because the unbeliever does not know God and he has no regard for what you do. However, if it's within your power, he said, we pursue peace only. He says, stay until your chastity, your holy living, wins that person over to Christ. Because your stay also makes your children holy. The second situation is also in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 39. That is death. If one of the persons in question dies, either the husband or the wife, he said, the one who is alive is free from the law of marriage. Because if somebody dies, there's nothing you can do about it. If you have the power to raise the person back to life, glory to God, raise him back and continue. And the woman's wife died, he rose her back to life and they continued the marriage. So if you want to marry, sometimes check who has the power to raise. <laughs> That's on a lighter note. So the second way out of marriage is death. These two situations, you have no control over it. And so when this happens, it's not because you broke your home. It's either because the one who doesn't fear God has no regard for the covenant of marriage, or it's because death, who is the last enemy to be destroyed, decided to create a path. But the third way out of marriage is infidelity. Jesus was teaching in Matthew chapter 5 verse 31 to 32 and this is what Jesus said. Because in this scripture if you read the context Jesus was talking about relationship how to forbear with one another but he created an exception. He said it has been said whosoever shall put away his wife let him give, him, give her a, a writing of divorce. He now went further. He said, but I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, he said, it causes her to commit adultery, and whosoever marries her that is divorced also commits adultery. Are you seeing what Jesus is saying? Jesus is saying, as touching marriage, there's nothing you who is a believer that should allow you or authorize you to release your wife, unless she defies the bed by going the way of fornication. He said, if you put away your wife on any account that is not fornication, he said, that woman, if she marries anybody, she has committed adultery. And the person who marries her has committed adultery. You too, who gets married afterwards, you have committed adultery. So there is no way you can come out of marriage except if the bed is defied. If there is fornication. So, for the unbeliever, 
He can walk out of marriage because he doesn't fear God and he has no regard for scripture. Paul said in that situation, there's nothing you can do. But for the believer, the only way he can come out of marriage is either through death, that the other person dies, or the spouse go the way of fornication. Now, the statement Jesus also made here is pregnant because there's a second part of that statement. He said the only time that you can choose to put away your spouse is if for fornication. What it also means is that there is also a, a clause that is possible for you to forgive. But Jesus is not making it a law over you. Jesus is saying, should in case you have understood forgiveness to that level, if your wife defies, if your husband defies, you can choose to forgive. But in case you don't want to forgive, you have not sinned, you can choose to put her away. But if it is not only on fornication or on the ground of death, if you are a believer, if it is not fornication or death, if you put your wife away, he said, both you, the woman, and who marries her, eventually, you are all guilty of adultery. And so for a believer, there are two ways out of marriage. It's either death or infidelity. For an unbeliever, there are many ways out of marriage. He can choose to walk out. That's why you shouldn't marry an unbeliever. That's why we tell you, don't marry an unbeliever. If you marry an unbeliever, he can wake up tomorrow and say, I'm tired. He will walk away. There's nothing you can do. You will start your life afresh. That's why we also say, marry who fears God. Because if you marry a man who doesn't fear God, tomorrow he can go and get a lot of concubines. And the point will come where you can't bear it anymore. You will decide to walk away. So, these are the only two grounds from which a believer can be set free from marriage. Either by death or when the bed is defied. How about a situation where your husband or your wife beats you? Because that's one area where people build an argument that it's better to live than to die in marriage. There are two things I will tell you on that matter. Number one, marry correctly. If you marry correctly, that situation will not come. And marry correctly means marry who God is leading you to, not who you have feeling for. Number two, marry who fears God. And number three, marry who aligns with your purpose. A man who aligns with your purpose or a woman who aligns with your purpose knows your value. He will value you beyond the slap. A man who fears God will not slap you. And a man whom God chooses for you, 99% of the time will not slap you. And then apart from that also, don't neglect warning signals. If you do this, this situation will not arise. So marry correctly so that these things don't happen. But in the situation where you have married wrongly, and this thing is already happening, don't listen to what they see on Facebook and walk out of marriage. That is a very sensitive matter because, like I was sharing, the challenge is not the argument that led to a slap. The challenge is deeper than the argument that led to a slap. It is a bogus thing. If your marriage becomes inhabitable and violence comes in, what you need to do is to submit it to a spiritual authority. Let the spiritual authority examine the situation. Because there are three things that can happen. Number one, the first thing that can happen is that they can trace the cause, what is leading to that violence. And either through prayer or through the word of God or through counsel, it can be corrected. And then number two, it is possible that the situation it's not being corrected and in that case they may separate you temporarily for a season so that both of you can come under intense rehabilitation by the word and prayer and they will keep talking discipling you if they are convinced that you have repented and you have come to a point where you have overcome that situation that authority authority can decide to unite you but if in a situation where they see that that cannot happen then what that authority will do is that they will tell you to live apart. You will not be divorced because Jesus didn't say divorce when there is crisis. But you will have to bear that cross by living apart. Both you and the person will no longer get married. That's why you have to be careful before you marry somebody. Forget this garbage on Facebook. 
I tell you, he slaps you or she slaps you, walk away. Walk away to where? There's no divorce because there is crisis in marriage. Go and read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. The Bible did not administer divorce when there is crisis in marriage. That's why you shouldn't jump into marriage because of feeling. Marry correctly. But if that is already happening, go to an authority. That authority will probe it to see what the exact problem is if it can be handled. If it cannot be handled at the moment, that authority will separate you. And this separation is not just go and live your life. In the course of that separation, they will be discipling both of you. Because the idea is to create transformation. And then while they are discipling both of you, if they arrive at a point where they feel you can coexist, they will bring you back. But in a situation where it cannot happen, then that authority can tell you, go separate ways. But you can't divorce and you cannot remarry. It will become a cross you will bear for a lifetime. So before you get married, for those of you who are not yet married, better do it the Bible way. And for those of you who are already married, invest enough character, enough prayer, and enough scripture, word of God, for that marriage to work. Because if it deteriorates, it will be a cross. If somebody tells you on Facebook, you quarreled, he slapped you, he beat you, walk away, and you walk away and marry another person. Jesus said, if it is not for the cause of fornication, he said, you are guilty of adultery. The person that marries you is also guilty of adultery. And so marriage will become the reason why you will go to hell. So many people enter marriage saved, but they walk out of marriage unsaved and they go to hell. This is why. Bow your heads and pray.